Hi, my name is Dr. Ken Tyndall and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Canis Automotive Labs. A security gateway is conceptually very simple. There are two CAN buses. One is the untrusted bus or outside where we don't trust the environment much and the other is the trusted bus or inside where all the devices we most want to protect are. The security gateway sits between the two buses and copies only legitimate CAN frames back and forth. In practice, there are a lot of details to get right, and in any case, gateways don't offer complete protection. For example, authorized messages could be passed through that exploit a remote code execution vulnerability in the firmware of a targeted device. And then we're back to dealing with malware on the trusted CAN bus. This is a particular worry for diagnostics. It's traffic that the gateway has to let through, but a diagnostic stack is a large and complex software stack and consequently has a lot of vulnerabilities. I will talk more about the requirements for a security gateway implementation by using as an example the security gateway developed by Canis Labs. We designed this gateway a few years ago and it uses a conventional microcontroller with dual CAN bus interfaces interfaced to two different buses. The device also has some local switch inputs. Inside is flash memory that stores rules on what to do with frames. The gateway receives a frame via a CAN controller and the first thing it does is work out what its logical ID is. This is used to index into the rules table and the frame's rules are applied. It's then either dropped or forwarded into the outgoing frame queue. The first issue is performance. The gateway must run fast enough to process all possible incoming CAN frames without being overloaded. The smallest time between CAN frames is 47 bit times or 188 microseconds on a 250 kilobit bus. And there are at least two buses. So the software must be carefully designed to handle this worst case load. The Canis Labs gateway has several different types of rules. There's a basic drop forward rule and a range check rule, which looks a part of the payload to see if it's inside or outside a range of values. This can be particularly useful if the payload contains addresses. There's a real time rule that puts limits on how often the frame can arrive before it's dropped. This rule is there to prevent flood attacks. It also can handle bursts of frames that are part of a segmented message. There's a final rule, rewriting the CAN frame before it is queued. Parts of the CAN ID in the payload can be changed. One use for this is where a frame on the trusted bus can be exported but with some signal zeroed out to prevent external devices from capturing commercially sensitive information. The Canis Labs gateway can also handle CryptoCAN traffic. It can decrypt CryptoCAN messages before applying rules and it can encrypt outgoing messages after applying rules. The gateway also supports multiple modes that enable or disable rules. This is especially useful to stop frames containing OTA firmware until a programming mode is activated. And an interlock can be attached to a mode so that the mode can only be active when a physical input to the gateway is pulled low by a switch. This can be useful where a CAN frame controls some machinery on the trusted side, but must be sent from a user interface on the untrusted side, like a touchscreen on a telematics control unit. Since the interlock is enabled only by a human pressing a physical switch, a compromised device can only activate the machinery when the human is there. The rules table in a Canis Labs gateway is programmed over a CAN bus. It's possible that the only physical access point to the gateway is the untrusted CAN bus, perhaps reached only via a diagnostic connector. And so the programming is done by secure messages containing the table, sent using CryptoCAN. There is a challenge response protocol used so that the tool and the gateway authenticate each other. The table itself is compiled to binary from a text-based JSON file that describes the rules. The tool protocol is designed to be secure end-to-end, -end, so the tool end may run in cloud infrastructure, with CryptoCAN messages tunneled from the infrastructure to the CAN bus. And the programming protocol also includes support for end-of-line provisioning, where the serial number and cryptographic keys are programmed. A secure gateway has to be secure, but must cause as little disruption to the application as possible. One of the most important features of the CAN protocol is its robustness. It implements atomic multicast. Quite simply put, frames are not lost. So when a security gateway receives a frame, then it has to fulfill the same promise. It cannot drop legitimate frames. Keeping this promise comes down to two related things, buffering and jitter. I want to cover the buffering first because this is crucial to the design of a security gateway. The CAN protocol is a priority-based protocol, sending the highest priority, or the lowest ID value, frame first. 
If there are several frames at any given device, then the highest priority frame inside the device must be entered into CAN bus arbitration. If this isn't done, then we get a horrible problem called priority inversion. In this example, we have three different nodes with queues of frames in FIFO order. The number indicates the CAN ID. The frame we're interested in has ID hex 0 F0. It is high priority, the most urgent frame in the system, and normally it would be transmitted first. But just ahead of it in its controller queue is a low priority frame. The three CAN controllers each pick their frame, and then the CAN protocol's arbitration system picks the highest of those. The low priority frame naturally loses to all the medium priority frames. Only when all the medium priority frames have been sent does the lowest priority frame get sent on the CAN bus, and only after that does the urgent frame get to go. In effect, its priority has been inverted. It got treated as the lowest priority frame. Priority inversion is poison for real-time control systems. The most urgent things get stuck and can suddenly experience a huge latency, which has all kinds of knock-on effects. Worse, this is an intermittent problem that might not show up in testing, but happens later in deployment, where the environment is slightly different. That's exactly what happened here in 1997 with the Mars Pathfinder mission, where the spacecraft kept hitting a watchdog timer reset. Fortunately, NASA were able to fix the problem with an OTA firmware update all the way to Mars. What does this mean for a security gateway? Well, the ongoing queues have to be ordered by priority, or specifically CAN IDs. That requires the hardware be capable of internally arbitrating by CAN ID. And it means that the CAN driver software needs to drive the hardware properly. In my experience, that's rarely the case, and lots of systems have priority inversion in the drivers hidden like a rake in the grass, ready to cause mayhem. I've even seen self-driving car system that sends steering control commands in an urgent CAN frame that could get stuck behind the slowest CAN frame. So if we get the drivers right, that fixes buffering in a security gateway. No, there's still a problem. Some frames must be sent in FIFO order. This is a common requirement for frames in a segmented message, and it shows up a problem with most CAN controller designs. If two frames with the same CAN ID end up in the priority queue, then the hardware makes an arbitrary choice, often reordering frames, which completely breaks segmented messaging. The Canis Lab security gateway addresses this with a rules table. Multiple FIFO queues can be configured and specific frames can be allocated to a specific FIFO. The head of each FIFO then feeds into the main priority queue. So segmented messages can be sent and the system is free of priority inversion. This arrangement isn't perfect. The FIFO frames cannot be sent at full speed. The CAN bus is released while the CAN drivers fetch the next frame from the FIFO, and that lets in a lower priority frame, delaying the next FIFO frame. Fortunately, Canis Labs is designing a new CAN controller based on its CAN hardware IP, and this implements in hardware both priority and FIFO buffering in a single queue stored in the controller, and segmented messages can be sent at full speed. I want to now talk about jitter, because this is an even less appreciated problem than priority inversion. Imagine a regular periodic event that causes a CAN frame to be generated and queued. That queued frame will wait until it is the highest priority on the CAN bus and then be transmitted. The time it waits will be variable though, and sometimes that will be a long time and sometimes more. The arrival time of a periodic CAN frame won't be nice and periodic, it will jitter about. And that's a problem because it means that over a short period of time, the frame arrives at a higher rate, which makes the worst case latency of lower priority frames longer, causing knock-on real-time problems. A security gateway makes jitter worse. The outgoing jitter of a frame is inherited from the jitter of the incoming frame, with more added due to variations in processing time within the gateway and then on the bus. If the jitter gets too large, as it almost certainly will when there are multiple gateways in a path, then frames arriving at a receiver can be overwritten by later ones, breaking the atomic multicast promise not to drop frames and damaging the real-time performance of other frames on the bus. There are ways to defeat jitter in a gateway, for example, delaying the queuing of a frame if it would otherwise go into the CAN controller too soon. So that's security gateways. They're not perfect. They don't stop hijacking of devices by legitimate traffic. And if not implemented carefully, they can cause a system to misbehave by dropping frames and disrupting real-time performance. But there's a role for something that keeps untrusted devices from being electrically connected to a CAN bus. Thank you for watching. You can find out more about these topics from my blog site, kentindle.github.io. 
and you can contact me by email at ken.tindall at canislabs.com.